Hi everybody, it's Harvard Lawyer Lee. Well, at last we have it. Johnny Depp's response to those salacious claims by Amber Heard that there was a fake juror who sat in on the trial, sat on the jury, and helped render the verdict in favor of Johnny Depp and against her. You may remember those claims from Amber Heard. She made them for the first time a month after the trial when she filed her motion to set aside the verdict against her. She said that she was suspicious, believed one of the jurors was not the juror who had been called for jury duty. This was her thinking, that according to documents sent out by the court to both parties, the juror who was supposed to be there would have been 77 years old and was born in 1945. Instead, she said, the juror who showed up, looked younger, was born in 1950 and was only 52 years old. She didn't really say how she knew that or what gave her that information, but she said that meant the court really ought to investigate, that this was a serious matter and the court ought to investigate it and look into it. A week later, Amber Heard's team filed a second pleading. This time they said they knew for sure that the juror who served was not the same one who was called for jury duty that voter registration records showed them that the juror who showed up for trial was younger than the person who was supposed to come, that the two people lived at the exact same address and had at least the same last name. Now in this supplemental pleading it was heavily redacted and the reason was that the court said nobody is allowed to issue the names of the jurors to release those until a year after the trial is concluded. She did that to protect the privacy of the jurors. Therefore, they redacted the document and pulled it out. To me, it looked like they were saying the two jurors had the exact same names. I have seen some commentary from people who read it to say that the two jurors had the same last name and may or may not have had the same first name. I can't know for sure. I will say this. If I were writing a brief and I wanted to persuade the court that people were different, I would have said clearly, Court, these two people may have had the same last name, but they had different first names. And frankly, the clerk of court should have caught that when she looked at IDs. Amber Heard didn't say anything like that. Instead, she just mentioned, he heavily redacted, that the two people had the same last name and lived at the exact same address. Implication being, it was a father and son, and the son showed up for jury duty when the court intended to call the father. But with the same name, there was confusion. So... What Amber Heard said this time was not just that she wanted an investigation from the court. She said this time she wanted a mistrial declared from the first trial and she wanted a brand new trial to start over with the entire trial because this juror had not been called for jury duty. Amber Heard made that claim and now Johnny Depp's team has responded. They have two different pleadings that we're going to talk about so you'll know what their response is. The first response is part of their longer response to the motion for a new trial that Amber Heard has requested. And this is what they say in that. They say, first of all, that Amber Heard waived her right to challenge the accuracy of the information listed in that information about the jury. She waived that because she was given that information five days before trial. She then talked to all of the jurors during voir dire she then saw the jurors for six solid weeks of trial, and at no point in that time did she object. At no point in that time did she say, I think this is the wrong person, and I want you judge to stop the trial or don't start the trial, and let's get in an alternate something. She never said that. Instead, she went all the way through the trial, and not until her post-trial motion a month afterwards did she raise the allegation for the first time. And what Depp's team is saying is, look, it's waived. It's gone. If you wait that long, you can't still make that claim. The second thing they claim is that there's no proof of injustice, that it's not enough to say, look, this could have been a problem. It isn't the correct juror. You have to show that there was some actual harm. There has to have been injustice to Amber Heard. They cite a case that was very interesting, saying that there was a situation where two convicted felons sat on a jury and no one even knew it until after the trial. And even so, the court refused to reverse it because they said the defendant hadn't proven that there was any injustice as a result. The third thing that the Depp team argued 
is that Amber Heard herself had a duty to verify the information at the time. And that comes straight from a statute that says any error in the information shown on such copy of the jury panel shall not be grounds for a mistrial or assignable as error on appeal. And the parties in the case shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of such information. So they're saying if there was a problem, Amber, it lies at your feet. You were supposed to notice that at the time. The fourth thing they argue is that Amber's argument in itself is based on pure speculation, that she isn't citing her sources or what's making her believe this or attaching them. She's simply alleging it. A fifth thing they argue is that it did not rob Amber Heard of a fair trial, that much as with the injustice, there has to be some thing that was caused by it. It's not enough to just say the wrong juror was here. There has to actually be harm. And here they say there was not harm. Now, they also filed a separate pleading because they were responding directly to Amber Heard's supplemental motion. She made it a week after her first motion. The number one thing they say is, it's too late. You were given a deadline of a week ago to file because we ourselves only had 10 days to respond to you. Therefore, we needed more time. You filed it three days before our response was due, and that's too late. If you had a problem with the juror, you had a full month to investigate. You should have found out that issue that you claim about they live at the same address and have the same name. You should have found that out beforehand. You should have found it out before you filed your very first briefing. So they say, first of all, it's untimely. You didn't file it fast enough. That argument, frankly, probably won't swing the day because the court will say, look, it was just two pages. You responded. But I think the other two probably will. The next thing they said was, you had access to these facts months ago. Exactly what we were just talking about. These issues were already apparent to Amber Heard. If she believed the juror was younger than the person who was supposed to be serving, she could see that. That was apparent. That was something that she saw every day of the trial. She saw it before the trial, when the juror showed up for the first time, and she saw it all through the trial. That is nothing that was really new. This was something she could have raised earlier and weighed by not raising it. The third thing they say is that Ms. Heard fails to cite any unfair prejudice. Again, sort of a similar argument saying, look, if a son served instead of his father, they were both registered voters in the county they were both eligible to serve for jury duty. What's the harm? How is there any problem that was raised? How is there anything about this that created an unfair, unjust result? In our next video, we're going to unpack the rest of the motion, which deals with the other things that Amber Heard is raising. That's important because the other motions, the other arguments that Amber Heard is making are probably the same ones she's going to make on appeal. She may not even raise the fake juror on appeal because there is the provision that says it's not grounds for appeal, but she probably will raise these other issues. So we'll go through that in our next video, and I will look forward to seeing you. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitter at LawyerLeeW. See you soon.